Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here, and today what I'm bringing to you guys is my honest opinion and review of the mutations update in New World and the current state of the game. Now, this is potentially a little bit of a touchy subject for some people. I might not have the same opinion as all of you guys watching, so of course feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Just keep it respectful as always. But yeah, I'm going to be talking about how I think the mutations update has worked in New World and basically about what is going on in the game at the moment because you know i did a video on the massive list of bugs that we've currently got that are known issues and obviously with february coming up to be the bug fix month um that's something that i want to touch on i also want to touch on the content and the way that new world is unfolding for the majority of the player base and touching more on those end game players or those hardcore players that play a lot of hours every single week and that sort of side of things and then I want to talk about as well kind of where they should go from this what progression I personally think would be good and that's the point I really want to get your guys's feedback on see what you think as well so that we can maybe come up with a productive way for some feedback towards the new world team how they can move the game because currently it's feeling a little bit on and off so first of all starting with the update itself I actually think that the mutations are quite fun I personally have had a lot of fun doing them and um, it's essentially just a gear score grind like is in many other MMO games and it's one of those things where you level up your gear past the previous maximum or the maximum obtainable levels and using this special currency from these mutations themselves they increase in difficulty the further up and so does the rewards that you get so it's that kind of linear scaling system that is how you increase gear score similar to other systems we've seen from other games however obviously the system is unique in terms of the shards the umbral system that is a whole new thing and mutations is kind of like its own variant on um, dungeon expansion type content which actually like i say i've really enjoyed i've enjoyed the extra mechanics i thought the gameplay has been really fun despite it being technically reruns of stuff we already had i've actually really enjoyed playing it because again it's brought teams together it's given me a lot of opportunity to play with players and really get sort of that group synergy going with different members of the group and you know pulling in different people who are good at certain roles for each different mutation and um, obviously i played this on the ptr as well which is where i'm basing this off as well obviously i'm going to use the most up-to-date information but that was still part of the play testing that i did and part of my experience on these there's not a whole lot of difference since the ptr to the live so it makes sense that's where you'll see some gameplay from today as well and yeah basically i've enjoyed that part of it i've enjoyed upgrading my gear i quite like that it gives you benefits what i don't like so much is how kind of obscured this access is so obviously we get access to one orb per week which is from the shop and one orb per week from crafting you do also get another orb per week the first time you clear an end game dungeon so just a regular form and you get another mutated orb from that now, some players have reported you do get drops from within these dungeons. Sometimes as well, you'll get one back at the end. You'll get a mutation orb drop from killing the final boss. I personally haven't had this on live, but I did have it on the PTR. So I can't 100% confirm whether that's in or not right now. You know, you've got kind of 50-50. Some people saying they've never had it. Some people saying they have. But either way, three or four orbs per person per week. It's not horrendous. But these are fairly difficult and, you know, sometimes people want to try and get these going. Now, particularly with it being the way that you access those higher gear scores, if you're going to be running, for example, level 2, let's say, most players at 590 plus, 595 plus, that sort of region of gear score overall, can clear the first 1 and 2 with good tactics and good communication quite easily the mobs are a little bit more tough they do a lot of damage but the mechanics are fairly simple it's just a little bit of an expansion on what you would get in the vanilla versions so i think that does allow for a lot of players to you know go in there and be able to take advantage of these mutations whilst it's not too overwhelming but with that what is the problem well level two really doesn't give you that many shards you need a lot of shards to get your gear score up and that's not even just from 600 plus i'm talking about from 595 let's say to 600 you're still going to need a few hundred shards which will take you a few runs so if you're thinking you've got four keys times that by five you've you know you've got a fairly decent amount of 20 between a group but if you need to do 10 runs just on level two in order to get your gear score up to even be able to attempt level three or four which you know some players will be able to do it earlier than that with lower gear scores because they're better at the game some players who are more casual just want to try it out and have fun with it absolutely fine but in terms of if you were leveling up gear as an average player that's probably what you'd need to do 
then that's quite a lot, and that's half your runs per week. Yeah, okay, the next week you'll be able to take on the higher ones, and I think is more of a longevity-aimed system, but it hasn't added any fresh content to the game other than just upgrading that gear. Now, what I mean by this is, personally, if I was going to see this update come out, I would have preferred it to come out alongside a PvP update that enabled the PvP players to have something extra to do, because, of course, we have Outpost Rush, and we have the Wars, neither of which are included in this scaling gear system and there's no alternative gear scaling system for pvp at the moment as well so you're kind of in this era where you have to do pve whether you like it or not if you want to be at the top form for both pve and pvp so that's put a lot of people off the other thing i would say is yes it does encourage people to work together even, you know, in the PvE situation, which maybe isn't your favourite thing, it's good to get that team synergy going. That is a positive, but again, a lot of people maybe don't have level 200 stone cutting, cuts off one of their options to get that orb per week. Obviously, most people have tier 5 on their faction, so they're able to get the one from the shop, but, you know, maybe people haven't crafted keys for Lazarus or Genesis or whatever to go and run that to get another mutated orb, and then, you know, there's all these other things that can cut people out of that if they're more of a PvP-focused player. Maybe they haven't done life skills at all, you know, maybe they've just focused on getting geared up through drops and through war and making money off doing that. Who knows? I would say, from my personal perspective, I've taken New World as a game where I do a little bit of everything. I've done a lot of PvP, I've done a lot of PvE, and I've done a lot of life skills. More hours than I would care to admit, really. Um, but on that, I've enjoyed doing it. That's what I've found fun about the game, and I personally like doing all of those different things. But, as I say, if we roll back the clocks and this update was coming out, what I would like to see is a PvP variant or PvP way of levelling up your gear as well, whether it's you get Umbral Shards from completing a war if you're placed in a certain place, or just by competing in general. Same with OPR, maybe. And potentially, you know, maybe the release of an arena, 3v3, 2v2, 5v5, and those, again, having either access to the Umbral system with Umbral Shards dropping or with access to a separate system that gives it another way to upgrade because obviously the Umbral Shards are relative to the challenge of the mutation level. So something similar scaled for PvP would be amazing. Obviously, you've got to take into account things like the time taken and, you know, you need your stat boost in foods. So that's why these arenas would make more sense because you're going to want to be on top of your stats with that. Um, but obviously, they'd be a lot quicker. So maybe there'd be something like a daily tournament or tournaments every hour or something like that. Who knows? but just some way of adding in access for those PvP players. Now, I do also feel like there is a lack of endgame content once you're at that point. If you don't want to do the mutations to grind out your gear, or you've done a few of them, you've got most of your gear up a little bit, once you've got to 625, that's kind of it again. Yes, that might take a while, but for those that kind of aren't that bothered, they just want to play the game, be involved in some PvP, you know, log on, do a few mutations here and there. The casual, more casual, I'd say, endgame players, but you still got to be pretty hardcore to get to the point where you're getting 600 plus. I feel like they've kind of been cut out of the circle a little bit with this. And the reason for that, like I said before, you know, not everybody's going to have the 200 stone cutting for access. Not everybody's going to have keys for the previous expeditions, the vanilla versions. But on top of that, you're also going to have people who don't have the time to grind out the level of mutations because they do take a long time. 35 minutes is, you know, your recommended slot to do it in. But obviously, you've got to get the keys and you need to do multiple of these, like I said, to upgrade one piece of gear. So... They are pretty time consuming if you want to be able to push those later levels. And of course, I think, like I said, that is the purpose of these. They're intended to be a longevity type content. But for those of us that have been at Endgame for a long while, since the second week of release almost, you know, there's certain things here now where it's like, okay, there's not actually that much going forward that we can sink our teeth into other than what was already here, which is, of course, the wars and the OPR and stuff like that. Now, that isn't altogether a bad thing. I do enjoy doing all of those things. Obviously, I'm trying to max out all my life skills, you know, so that's going to take me a little bit of time as well. But what I would say, the problem we've got mainly here then is the bugs and the massive, colossal level of bugs that we have with this. They even released the known bug list. Like I said, I made a video on it and... There's just a crazy amount of stuff in the game right now that isn't good. Now, I know from what the devs said in their video explaining the mutations update this is kind of earlier than they would have liked it to be and i would 100 percent agree with that 
the bug update should have been first in every instance of this game because the bugs are the main retracting factor from how good this update is and could be. You know, there's things going on with the war roster right now where we've got duplicate names. People aren't then getting invited because technically they haven't been added in because it's just one of their other names has been added and they're on the list two times there. So you add the wrong one, they don't get an invite, then you get an auto filled. There's things like when you upgrade your gear, sometimes it isn't registering as an upgrade. So you have to relog the game, relaunch the client in order for that to work. There's a whole host of other things going on, streamlining, and obviously balance changes is on a whole separate thing. That is something that will always be ongoing in a game like New World where you've got pvp changes and meta changes and stuff fine that's you know maybe it's unbalanced maybe it's not whatever at the current time but the bugs are something which should have been really squashed i know that february is their designated month to deal with that i personally just think that should have been sooner so it's a shame we didn't see that come a few weeks before this update and i think this would have had a much more high success rate and retention of players now in terms of where i sit at the content with this i actually am still really enjoying the game i'm playing it less hours per day than i was but that's mainly because i've maxed out i need to wait for teammates for these mutations etc but i am still really enjoying it i'm someone like i said that enjoys the life skills the pve the pvp we own settlements so we've got wars and invasions to do there and i do think that that adds greatly to the game as well as having an amazing community over there of you know my company who i play with all the time and that is a really good experience but I think for those more solo casual players or small groups it's going to be not as fun because these are pretty hard grinds in these mutations so maybe we'll get something that caters towards more players openly and casual players progression etc going forward but again like I said the pvp aspect there I think is something which is really untapped in this game so far obviously we could see that in the future and it is something they have spoken about but hopefully it is fairly sharpish so overall what do I think they should do well I think it should really focus on the bugs. Obviously, like I've said several times in this video now, February is the update month for bugs. We know that's coming. I think that cannot come soon enough. They all need to be fixed. We need as many bug fixes as possible because I do think it's a shame that this update has kind of been overshadowed by that. I think the devs have done a fantastic job with the mutations. It's fun. It's different. It's quirky. But because of the issues that people have had on the server and in general, it's been overshadowed because some of these things have been persisting since launch. Bots gold sellers etc need to be gone asap they're skyrocketing certain things in the economy they are giving people gold for real world currencies in game as well that's something that they really need to get on top of to kind of eliminate because that is something that's just very annoying and then in terms of content wise what do they need to do well the mutations are actually really fun like i said in my opinion they're not going to be everybody's cup of tea but i really do like them they should certainly add some pvp events arenas all types of different things open world events bosses and um, potentially roaming type events that pop up across the world similar to the corruption portals would be amazing and some extra things to include for that type of players then something along the trading skills line so maybe it's you know certain sub levels of skills you can unlock or something similar to that which allows you to craft masterwork piece things which is specific to only people who've maxed out these skills because again there's a lot of people who just play life skills and crafting etc in the game and they really enjoy that so more content for them would be amazing the satchels and the trade skill apps tube is a really really good move in the right direction we just need to see that expanded on now and i think going forward they just need to make sure that everything is kind of squashed out and assigned as physically possible before they get updates live however that being said i don't think it's a direct decision from the developers they've obviously got people in charge of their team and people in charge of that etc 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 who will be making the decisions for all of these different shot calls of how the progression of the game goes so they can only do so much so with what they've done great so far let's get these bug fixes over and done with so that we can see what state the game is actually in and hopefully that will encourage a lot of players back to the game it will encourage a lot of players to continue playing the game and hopefully then it will lead way for the mutations update to fully flourish and whatever content we see after the february bug update can actually be put into full force without it being overshadowed by issues and bugs from the games engine from the system engine from desync etc which is really really where we want to be at with new world overall still really enjoying the game still thinking it's absolutely fantastic would love to see more stuff coming rapidly and quickly once everything's been fixed but for now i'm cool with where we're at if we can get those fixes done like i said i'm still going to be uploading tons of content on it i've got loads of cool videos planned so make sure you stay tuned for the channel for all of that stuff coming up because as i said still one of my favorite games if not my favorite game at the moment and then obviously we've got lost art coming out soon so i'm going to be jumping in with that as well so let me know what you guys are excited for at the moment in new world lost ark or mmos in general other than that that is going to be it for 
today, guys. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts and opinions are. Like I said, keep it pleasant, but just, you know, express yourselves, express what you think about the state of the game and how they could maybe remedy some of the issues you've got, because that would be the really crucial part. And other than that, that's going to be it. So like I said before, if you're new to the channel, drop a subscribe down below. Drop a like on today's video if you did enjoy, and I'll catch you again tomorrow with some brand new content. Take care, guys, and peace.